Shalom. Kala Yahweh Bashim Yashai, Bashim Rukhapur Dash. Double honors my teachers, the apostles and elders of the Great Millstone. Peace and mercy to the elect who are the house of David reborn again in this generation. And Shalom to the 130 Yashar Ralam, who today are known as the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, who before losing our true heritage were known as and still are the true Hebrew Israelites of the Holy Bible. In today's lesson, I want to go through the details of the Feast of Trumpets, also referred to as the Memorial of Blowing of the Trumpets, and which the world refers to as Rosh Hashanah. Okay? Now, when we get into the holy days of our people, of our nation, this is one of the seven holy days. Let's go ahead and get into uh, the calendar. Right, see this right here on the outer ring in white refers to the Hebrew months. Now these names here, as the apostles have pointed out, are not actually Hebrew names for these months, but are the Babylonian names which the Babylonians put upon our months. Okay, this is why you have names like Tammuz and stuff. But the point being is that we can still use them to refer to our months, okay? Now, this line here in black refers to the solar Gregorian calendar, which we currently live under, right? This is our enemy's calendar, which we are currently subject to. Well, right now, we are currently in the beginning of Tishri, or about to be in the beginning of Tishri, where it's August 13th, right? So it's back here. So again, these, these dates don't always line up. But for the most part, right now, uh, we're in, about to hit the beginning of Tishri, the seventh month. And in about two days, in the evening, will be Tishri the first. And on that day, Tishri the first, is the day when we shall celebrate the memorial of blowing of trumpets. Now, if you want to understand how you find out when these uh, months start, you have to go to the Apostles page right or namely if you want to go directly to the source uh, one of the elder brothers in the main camp uh, his channel name is GMS new moons and high holy days but you also have the apostle uh, Ramla GMS info doc channel 12 or you have apostle Tahar GMS declaring the end who put forward or post these days right so for example they just posted the new upcoming new moon, which is on August 15th, 2023, and it's going to be from Tuesday to Wednesday. But because this is a double day, I guess you could say, right? It's a new moon Sabbath, the beginning of the month and a Sabbath, but also it's the memorial of blowing trumpets, right? Same thing, August 15th, 15th e evening to the August 16th evening, okay? Now... Let's go ahead and uh, get into this a little bit more. So it tells you here, it says that this holiday says it commemorates the memorial of the blowing of the trumpets over our peace offerings, sacrifices, and feast days, and pretty much all the other events which the Lord commanded us to do in regards to blowing of trumpets, right? This could be read of in uh, Numbers 10, which we're going to get into in just a bit, but trumpets were used a lot for our people to communicate it was in, in used in the time of war and like it says here in sacrifices peace offerings feast days and whatnot right this is the memorial of these old ways and the old um, directions that we used to have it is also to call Israelites and warn them that Yahweh Bashim Ashai will return because what are we doing now right well we are out here teaching and preaching to our people to be aware that the Lord is about to make his second coming. He's gonna come back with a vengeance and doing so, you have to get right and prepare yourself to meet thy maker, right? You have to prepare yourself to stand in front of the Lord, which is what, what you gotta do to, to receive that salvation and be part of the one third of Israel that's gonna be saved. Now, let's read this, this is Leviticus, 23 and actually let's get this Leviticus 23 and 23 and Yahweh Bashem Hashai spake unto Moses saying Speak unto the children of Israel saying in the seventh month right Tishri, in the first day of the month 
shall ye have a Sabbath, a memorial of blowing of trumpets and holy convocation, right? Remember, holy means separate. A convocation, for me, most part, means like a gathering, right? Like a get-together, kind of like a party and stuff. So basically, it's a, it's a separate, it's supposed to be a separate special day, right? A special day that you put aside, basically a holy day, like a holiday. Ye shall do no servile work therein, but ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto Yahweh Bashim Shai. And there you go, right? So this is for the most part what, what the this holiday um, surmounts to, right? It's a holy convocation, and we are to make a sacrifice by fire. Now here's the, here's the catch in this, these latter days. The Lord doesn't require an actual burnt offering, right? There's no more animal sacrifices that are required of us because of the Messiah and how he came and he gave up his life for us. Okay, but we'll get into that in just a bit. Let me read this. This is Numbers 10 and 1. And Yahweh Bashim Hashai spake unto Moses, saying, Make thee two trumpets of silver, of a whole piece shalt thou make them, and thou that thou mayest use them for a calling of the assembly, and for the journeying of the camps. These camps refer to the Israelites in their own respective uh, houses, right? Because again, this is during the time when us Israelites were wandering in the wilderness for 40 years. Okay, and with, verse three, and when they shall blow with them, all the assembly shall assemble themselves to thee at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And it just goes here that gives instructions on how to use these trumpets. But let me jump down to verse nine. And if ye go to war in your land against the enemy that oppresses you, then ye shall blow an alarm with the trumpets and ye shall be remembered before Yahweh Bashim Hashai, your power, and ye shall be saved from your enemies. As also in the day of your gladness, and in your solemn days, and in the beginnings of your months, ye shall blow with the trumpets over your burnt offerings, and over the sacrifices of your peace offerings, and they, that they may be to you for a memorial before your power. I am Yahweh Bashim Hashai, your power. So there you go. That's the point. That they may be to you for a memorial before your God. So you see, the Lord wants us to remember our ways, right? And, and these are just, like I said, when you read Numbers 10, verse 1, all the way down to 10, these are just some of the, the instructions that the Lord gave us on how we should use the, these, the, the trumpets to, to call out to the Lord and to our people. So let's read an, an historic account of the memorial of blowing the trumpets because again, we weren't the only first group of Israelites to have to be retaught our holy days. To get an example of what's happening now, we just have to go back to Nehemiah, right? When Ezra was reteaching the people our, of our ways, right? Remember, Nehemiah, takes place after the Babylonian captivities once the southern kingdom had come back to Jerusalem and started to live righteously again, right? To go into our ways and, and, and learn the righteous laws of the Lord. Well, let's go and read this. This is uh, Nehemiah 8 and 1. And all the people gathered themselves together as one man onto the street that was before the water gate. And they spake unto Ezra, the scribe, to bring the book of the law of Moses, which Yahweh Bashim Hashai had commanded to Israel. Okay, so right here, the, the people were gathered, and Ezra, who again, it says the scribe, which for the most part, we understand he's a prophet, right? Remember, this is the same Ezra from the book of Ezra, the same Ezra that also wrote first and second Ezra's in the Apocrypha. Right, and is the same Ezra here in the book of Nehemiah. Remember, Ezra is the prophet that led the Israelites back to the land of Jerusalem out of Babylon, right, along with Zerubbabel the king. Well, let's go and skip down to verse eight. Well, actually, let me start at five, right? This to give you an idea of all this beautiful, we're gonna read this whole beautiful uh, uh, scripture here. So this is Ezra here, 
with along with all the other priests and prophets that were, you know, amongst the congregation that wanted to learn the, the our ways again. So this is Nehemiah 8 and 5. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was above all the people. And when he opened it, all the people stood up, and Ezra's blessed Yahweh Bashimashai, the great power. And all the people answered, Amen, Amen, with, lift, with lifting up their hands, and they bowed their heads and worshipped Yahweh Bashimashai, their, their faces to the ground. Also, Jeshua and Benai and Siribaya, Jamin, Akub, Sabathai, Hadijai, Masiah, Kalitia, Azariah, Jazobad, Hanan, Peliah, and the Levites caused the people to understand the law, and the people stood in their place. So they read the book of the law of God distinctly and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. So you see that? So just like what I'm doing, and I'm breaking down what the a memorial of the blowing of trumpets was or is and what it was used for before all the, how it was used to give instructions to our people to to give a, a, a memorial of the events we were doing before the Lord so he would recognize us right all these things were being were being done by our past and, and right here what we're seeing is this be, is being taught to our people just like it's being taught to our people today verse 9 and Nehemiah with which is Tishra, Tishratha and Ezra, the priest, the scribe, and the Levites that taught the people, said unto all the people, This day is holy unto Yahweh by Shimei your power. Mourn not, and nor weep, for all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Then he said unto them, Go your way, eat the fat, and drink the sweet, and spend portions unto and sends portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy unto Yahweh Bashimashai, neither be ye sorry, for the joy of Yahweh Bashimashai is your strength. So the Levites stilled all the people, saying, Hold your peace, for the day is holy, neither be ye grieved. So you see that? So, so this right here gives us an example of also how we should keep this holy convocation, right? This special day. It's not like a day where we're, you know, showing our reverence or we're being, you know, it's being a serious situation. This is a day for, for being joyful, for, for, you know, being happy that, you know, who we are, right? Remembering our beautiful past and, and what the memorial of blowing of the trumpets meant to us, right? It was a way for us to communicate with the Lord, the way for us to communicate with each other, right? It was a commandment that the Lord gave to us, right? This was something that was namely for us. Now, let's go back to this real quick. And let's just talk about the general observance points, right? So come, the, 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 when sundown hits on the 15th, these are the things that you should do if you can, that is, okay? Because remember... Right now we are in the time of grace, which means if you can't do this, let's say you're working or you just don't have the means or, you know, the resources to do this, not a problem, Akim. The best thing you could do in that case is simply just read the scriptures that I have listed down here, right? Leviticus 23 and 32, Numbers 10 to 1, all the way to, to verse 10, or you can even go through the whole, the whole chapter, Numbers 29 and 1. Nehemiah 8 and 8, which is what we just read. Okay, so let's read the general observant points. These are the things that we should all seek to do, right? It says, starts on the first Hebrew day of Tishrei in the evening. So again, um, when you look at the, uh, the calendar here, right? The first day of Tishrei is August 15th at night, okay? And it goes all the way to the next day, August 16th, it went at in the daytime, right? If you look over here in this uh, map, at the end of this, these days here, it's 6 p.m. Beginning is 6 a.m., okay? And it starts at 6 p.m. all the way to um, 6 a.m. or 5.59 a.m., right? So that's how these days are broken up. 
Next, let's go ahead and read these observance points. It says, read Leviticus 23 and 24, Numbers 10, 1 through 10, Numbers 29 and 1 during the ceremony observance. So when you're there having having your feast, be you know, whatever you'd like, you should read these, right? With your family, to yourself. It's just so we could have a memorial of, of what this is all about. Next, it says, no need to offer a burnt offering as the Messiah was our ultimate sacrifice. And I'll touch upon this in just a bit. Next, it says, prepare a lawful feast according to your liking. So again, as long as it's not pork, you know, or shellfish or anything that we're not supposed to eat, have at it, Alkium. Make a, make a feast, enjoy your favorite meal, whatever you can, right? And again, this is if you can do this, right? There's, this is not a commandment but it's simply just something to tell you to you know have at it you know you know go go nuts and enjoy the day because this is a day of gladness as we just read in Nehemiah it says blow a ram's horn to commemorate the holy day now this here may not be possible if you don't have a ram's horn you know if try to find a, a horn in your house right you have a you have uh, those horns you get at like sports events, right? Or from for New Year's or whatever, right? Whatever it be, if it's a horn, blow it, right? As, as you're reading, as, as you're praying, right? Do it in memorial of the Lord. And if you don't don't have a horn, hey, just throw up a, you know, Kwam Yasharala, right? Or, you know, whatever you can, right? Because again, what does the scripture say? You know, lift up your, your voice as a trumpet, right? Because ourselves, our voices are the trumpets, okay? So again, ideally, you want to do it with blowing a ram's horn to commemorate the holy day. And then next it says, blow a spiritual trumpet by sharing a video lesson if you are lawfully able to. And what this is really for is for you men out there who are able to make lessons, right? If you haven't made a lesson, give it a try, right? Make a lesson. You've watched these videos, mine, the other Akium. If you haven't made a video, this would be a great time to do so share this word with other people it doesn't have to be all amazing with cut scenes and and you know intros and music you don't have to do any of that Akium. you know just simply put your phone on read a couple of scriptures and that's it give a warning to our people be it a lesson of, of a certain scriptural breakdown or talking about the memorial of the feast of trumpets right anything right that is like you blowing that spiritual trumpet in israel okay now these scriptures here, like I just read, are uh, or just mentioned. These are the, the main scriptures that um, revolve around this holy day. Next, let's get into the sacrifices and why we no longer have to provide or do them. Okay, so remember, sacrifices in the old days in the Old Testament were something that the Lord gave us to remove iniquity and sin from us. Whenever we would go off. And we would, we would cause sin, which remember, sin is breaking of the law. The Lord made a way for us to cleanse ourselves spiritually. And that came by sacrificing a burnt offering onto the Lord, right? There was fine, there was fine, there was fine uh, grain offerings, uh, you know, drink offerings, animal offerings, right? But, but what happened is <clears throat> our people got so wicked that they basically, they, uh, let's, let's read this. It says, through our own corruption and misuse of sacrificial cleansing, we ruined the ability to remove sin from us by sacrificial atonement. And this is mentioned here in Ezra 1 and 11. To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me, saith Yahweh Bashem Shai? I am full of burnt offerings of rams and the fat of of red beet, a fed beast, and I delight not in the blood of bullocks and of lambs and of he goats. So you see, so the Lord no longer is accepting sacrificial, uh, you know, animal sacrifices, right? This no longer is something that we can do, right? So the people who are only into Old Testament, well, you're screwed because one, the Lord is not accepting animal sacrifices, and beyond and beyond that, there's no more temple. In existence today, like the Messiah, you know, prophesied that not a stone would be left upon 
uh, another stone of the temple. So there's no place for you to actually sacrifice. And, and there definitely is no uh, Levite priest who is actually performing the sacrifices, right? And all those uh, fake Israelis over there who are pretending to be Levites and they're building a third temple, that's a bunch of lies, right? That's, that's blasphemy because, again, that's not even what the Bible is talking about. So, again, the Lord did away with animal sacrifices. So this is no longer a path for us to go down, okay? And, wh and why is that? Well, mainly because the Lord offered us the ultimate sacrifice, right? He gave us, say, a way for us to make up for all our, our sins and iniquity, right? And let's read that. It says, Yahweh Shai has freed us from the law of sacrifice as he was the ultimate sacrifice for our sins, which is why those Israelites that believe on the Messiah, Yahweh Shai, and that he came in the flesh and died for our sins, have been cleansed of their sins, which will redeem them to Yahweh Bashim Shai, or Yahweh. And it says, this is uh, echoed here in Hebrews 9 and 12. It says, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. So you see that? So we no longer need to provide a, a physical sacrifice of blood or of an animal. Why is that? Well, because the, the Messiah, Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, came and died for us Israelites, right? He gave up his life so we could be redeemed. Let's uh, read what Yahweh Shai did well, in this last scripture here. This is Ephesians 5 and 2. And walk in love as Christ also hath loved us and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling Savior. You see that? So that right there is also another confirmation that the Messiah, when he came, he gave up his life so that way he could be that sacrifice, that sweet-smelling Savior onto the Most High Father, Yahweh, for us. So he, this is why his name is Yahweh Shai, which is Hebrew for he is salvation, because again, those who believe on him shall be saved. Now, that being said, there is still a sacrifice that we ourselves can give, and that's explained here in 1 Peter 2 and 5. Ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house, and holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Yahweh Shai, the Mashiach. Okay, so you see that? So we now give up spiritual sacrifices to the Lord, right? And how is that possible? That's possible when the Messiah came and died for our sins, you know, and was that physical sacrifice. He now made it so that way those who believe on the Messiah, right, believe he came in the flesh and have that faith, that faith and that belief that you give, that, you, that you're doing, that is a spiritual sacrifice which is acceptable to God. And what else does the Bible say about us? It says, this is Romans 12 and 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable unto god which is your reasonable service so you see when you come into this truth and you really want to follow the lord you really want to seek that salvation there's a price you got to pay and what is that well that's that you turn to the lord fully you give up your your life that old man those old ways you give those up and you become reborn again how do you become reborn again by doing new things, by following a new path, the path which the Lord set before us, okay? Not the ways we, you know, we have decided is the best, but the way that the Lord has written in the Bible, okay? And in doing so, you've now sacrificed your, your motives. You sacrificed your goals, right? You sacrificed yourself, your body, and you've now given yourself over to the Lord to do His will, to to be pleasing unto him. Now, yes, we still have a life. And you know, I I would, you know, dare say that the lives that you're gonna have are gonna be more full. And why is that? Well, because it's gonna be a true life. You're gonna have a true understanding of what's really going on, and you're actually gonna be awoken, right? Just as Neo in the Matrix, 
right? Though he may have had a nice life in the matrix, that was a fake life. There was something that was always wrong. And when he woke up, though it may not have been, you know, all, you know, what is it, sunshine and lollipops, he was more satisfied with it because even though it wasn't a convenient lie, but it was an inconvenient truth, right? And that's what this truth is here, right? It's not, it's not always pretty, but it's the truth, right? And what did the Lord say about the truth? Ye shall learn the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So hopefully this video was edifying, Akim. Hopefully it broke down what the memorial of the blowing of the trumpets are. You know, hopefully you enjoy it this uh, coming up 15th. And until the next time, uh, if you have any questions, you know, write them down in the comment board. But let's go and give all honor and glory and praises to Yahweh, Bashem Yashai, Bashem Rekhov Redash, Dabarus, my teachers, the apostles of Israel, and Shalom to the one-third of Israel and the house of David. Shalom.